and then you turn down this road like you get off on the exit turn down the road you see a few houses here and there then you just keep straight and then to your left and right there's nothing like there's literally nothing like it's just a road in front of you and it goes on for miles see how he got caught up out here. I can see how something happened because there's no one to witness anything because you're literally by yourself in the middle of nowhere. It was the most uncomfortable, unsettling feeling I've ever had, ever. And I feel it even now talking about it, I feel how I felt then. It was, it was not, mm -mm. that's when I said I, was, I will not go back to the desert. If I don't need to, I won't, like at all. It's like total silence. Yeah, yeah. It's eerie to me because I'm used. To, I'm a city person, used to hearing noise, and it's too quiet. Mm -hmm. But and it's scary because then I'm thinking, I wonder if somebody can see me. And I just can't see them because it's so wide open. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, thank you everybody for coming in, uh, coming to the search all uh, this morning. Uh, David Robinson, of course. Uh, you know, my son Daniel. They've been missing on June 23rd, of 2021. Uh, it's been a long road, you know, doing the searches. Uh, my first search initially uh, was a rescue mission. Um, you know, people like yourself came out and uh, supported the searches. Uh, we covered a lot of land. I mean. Two days before he went missing, we had a conversation like any other. Talked about his career, what he wanted to do. There was no indication of being sad or anything, but um, he, he talked about life. I, feel like, I think I finally got in a comfortable place in life. I felt like, you know, the house, um, sitting on my favorite place in the back, um, travel when you want to my children doing well, all I do is call them, talk to Daniel for two hours and the rest, and then you get the phone call and just change everything, you know, just like that. I started my grassroots search around July 3rd, July 3rd, 2021. Um, and I want to tell you, thank you to all the people who worked tirelessly out there in that desert with me in the 118 degree weather. I uh, really appreciate you guys. Um, like I said, uh, thank you so much for um, being out there with me. A lot of times pray when we, uh, uh, before we go out to search, because we are a family out there in the search. And I really want to uh, thank everybody who's been out there with me. July 19 was the most devastating day. Uh, this is where I had to see my son's vehicle uh, for the first time at the police compound. Never saw it at the scene. The Buckeye Police Department to give me the um, the courtesy to show where my son was. Um, the vehicle was found. It was found in that ravine. You guys know about a rancher uh, who said the vehicle wasn't there two, three days before. You guys look over this direction. That's again. That's where my son's vehicle was found on the other side of the hill there. And then one particular day, he called me up and he said, uh, I'm going to Buckeye to meet with the chief. And I said, well, you want me to go? He said, yeah. So we, I met him at the uh, police department. And so I'm listening to this bull that they're telling him, that the stories that they told uh, David about Daniel. You know, a lot of times when people go missing, they go missing, or he could have joined a monastery. And I'm sitting there fuming that they're telling this man that came here from South Carolina to try to find his son, but you as a police department, as police officers are telling them this crap, it was no sympathy, no empathy, no anything. And I'm sitting there boiling. And so the meeting finally ends and they, David and I walk outside. He said, how do you think it, it went? I said, they're full of crap. And so the detective walks up to David and uh, he hands him these bags, these evidence bags. And I've seen these bags before. And I'm like, OK, what's going on? And he drives off. So he gives David everything that they had found in the desert that they said belonged to Daniel. And I'm like, wow, I really see how this case is gonna go. I'm 
Thank you guys for coming in this evening's q and I'm David Robinson. I'm the father of geologist Daniel Kniez Robinson. This evening, you guys. All right, today is uh, November 6th, Saturday morning. Uh, we came out here to the desert area where Daniel was last seen and where our searches have been continuing now for 14 weeks. Uh, my investigator partner and I had uh, an idea to run down an area that had not been searched. And it was uh, further south, a couple miles south of the entrance road off a of cactus and uh my sister who lives in another state told me had you heard about this and I hadn't heard about Daniel and that was in October I think of 21 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so I just something in me told me I needed to get out there and be a part of the search so Saturday morning that search was happening, I drove myself from Phoenix to an hour's drive out to Buckeye to just to be a part of that search. And out on the curb of Cactus and Sun Valley, Park. Sun Valley Parkway, I meet Shauna and uh, for the where, first yeah, time. That was her about. first search yes. and that was my first yes. search. Because I hadn't heard about it until, and this was around the beginning of October of 21, I hadn't heard about it at all. I'd come home from work. Mm -hmm. Somehow it kind of popped up on my feed and I'm like, it just kind of touched me. Such a young person, mm -hmm. a black young male, he just kind of reminded me of some of my family members. And so that was a Tuesday. So that whole week I was, oh, I have to go out. No, I'm not going to go out. No, oh, I have to go out. Oh, I can't, I couldn't rest. Mm -hmm. And I continue, I just, um, okay, I'm going to go. We say good morning to each other every morning on okay. through, through our team chat. Mm -hmm. So it's, and if we don't hear to from somebody, right. hey, shout out, you so, good? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or Barry, no, we haven't heard from you. And of course it touched your heart when you see his picture. And I saw it on Next Door Neighbor. Somebody had posted on there. And I just told my husband, I have to, I have to do that. So of course then when you meet David and uh, get to know him you know he it's just it makes me cry <laughs> because you know I wouldn't want to miss my son like that you know it still makes me cry but um, because it's the right thing to do is come out here and help him and so many of these missing persons cases they're kind of lost to time and I think that's devastating because their family continues on loving them and missing them every day. But in the community's mind, like it's just another number, it's just another name. The more you put into the community, the more you get out. And um, I just hope that if I'm ever in this kind of situation, which I hope I never am, that um, the community will gather around me the way that I, you know, see it gathering here today for this family. One thing I can say about the search is um, the people like you can feel the com the camaraderie and the community, but you can also feel the sadness. It's really, really heavy. It's really heavy. Because you're hopeful, like you, you're just hoping that you find something. But at the same time, you have this thought in the back of your head, like if we do find something, is this what we really want to find? Um, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. I know how this thing can turn sideways sour real quick and the things that I know the things that I say on social media about Buckeye I see, and I read so I get pissed <laughs> I get pissed off because something happened that should not have happened especially in the police world Larnell has said as a police former police officer they just take it from the community right the community is angry and upset with them as mm -hmm. police officers they take it because they understand that the citizens have to put that anger somewhere, right? When something happens. Mm -hmm. Well, this police, like she's saying, seems to take it personally. Oh, you, you're mad at me? You, you don't like what I'm doing? Well, fine then, we mm -hmm. won't work with you. And that was the tone of everything. It went from there that they actually did nothing to try to find Daniel. And so it got to the point where they knew they messed up because David has the vehicle, David has all the evidence that they said they found in the desert, you know, from the crash site. And so I know they messed up and they realized it when they tried to get the stuff back from David. So don't give it back. They messed up. They knew they weren't supposed to give you that stuff because the case 
was not over. I don't think they're inept. I just think they are horrible people, you know, and people are always saying that um, because they're a small town that uh, they may not have the, uh, the resources. They have the resources. I don't care if you're from Mayberry or the biggest metropolitan city in the world as a police department. Policing is policing. You know how to police because everybody goes to the police academy. So I think their due diligence was to do nothing to help David and find Daniel. The lack of compassion and empathy for somebody else's life. And you just want to, I don't know, sometimes I just want to, I want to scream, I want to, I don't know what it is I really want to do, but you can feel it in your body. Yeah. Daniel's legacy is going to be the geologist who was not found. My fear is his remains will be found years later, and then it'll be like, oh yeah, remember when, unfortunately. I think he should be known and remembered for way more than that though. He was an activist himself. He participated in a lot of the Black Lives Matter um, uh, protests that happened in Phoenix. He was very vocal against issues pertaining to those of injustice. So I feel like, and he, I mean, he was a brilliant young man. He had so much going for him. He had his life ahead of him. And I feel like that should, that should be the focus, who he was and what he could have contributed to the community in his life.